expectations of what it means to encounter God in every place. Be open to God revealing something of his divine nature to us and changing the way we see the world. We're going to sing our first hymn now, on mute of course, but we're going to sing along at home. It is Lift High the Cross. We are not gathered in the same building, but at this time when we value one another even more, we come to worship together from where we are, knowing that God can hear all of us and can blend even distant voices into one song of worship. So let us tune into the Lord's radiance, allowing his light of glory to shine upon and within us as we offer our praise. Almighty God, we ask you to show us something more of who you are and how awesome your presence is. Overcome our fear of the unknown and lead us into a new experience of you. May our worship today be as on a mountaintop, a transforming encounter that empowers our discipleship. God of divine power, what a spine tingling event the disciples experienced on the mountaintop. First, they were looking at Jesus, the man. Then they were tuned into your glory, shining in and through him, as he transformed before their eyes your confirmation of his deity. God of life-changing moments, we glorify you. Your same radiant light 
which is available to us through a relationship with your son, can transform our hearts. God of life-changing moments, we glorify you. Your divine Holy Spirit tunes our faith in unexpected ways through the transforming radiance of your love. God of life-changing moments, we glorify you. And now our prayer of confession. When at times we become fixated on any spiritual mountaintops, sometimes failing to see and engage with what is happening around us in the everyday, we can become wrapped up in the moment and be forgetful about others. Forgive us, Lord, and shine on us, we pray. Many voices around us are tuned into today's world, telling us how we should rather live and what is best. But you, Lord, are our authority in life. Forgive us when we fail to test things against your word, Lord, and shine on us, we pray. Lord, whilst it is part of our faith walk to seek and be open to life-changing moments, we are sorry when we just plod through life and become despondent with the mundane. Forgive us, Lord, and shine on us, we pray. Amen. We say now, as if together, where we are now, the words of the prayer which Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer, using whatever form or version and language you prefer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now our first Bible reading taken from the second book of Kings, chapter two, and reading from verse two. Elijah ascends to heaven. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elisha said to him, Then Elisha said to him, Stay here. The Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed onto dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I'm taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I'm being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. 
Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Thanks be to God for this reading. And now we're going to sing our second hymn, which is Be Still for the Presence of the Lord. The second reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9, and reading from verse 2, the Transfiguration. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Thanks be to God for this reading of his word. 
To him be all glory and praise. Amen. Wow, that's quite a story. Thank you very much, Sandy, for reading it so powerfully. My name's Robin Goodchild, and it's my privilege to share some thoughts on the Bible readings we have just heard. The story of the Transfiguration features in three of the Gospels. Matthew's uh, at chapter 17, Luke's at chapter 5, as well as in Mark's. Uh, and the texts are remarkably similar. So it's appropriate that we hear it in Mark's gospel uh, because that was written first. I find it interesting that the passage begins with six days later, and these precise words appear in Matthew's version, um, while Luke has eight days. So where had Jesus and his disciples just been? They'd come from Caesarea Philippi, which is right in the north of today's Israel, uh, which I visited two years ago. Uh, and members of the Wednesday social group may recall I talked about my trip to the Holy Land to them in November 2019. Seems a long time ago. Um, what happened at Caesarea Philippi? Let me return to Mark's gospel um, chapter 8, verses 27 to 30. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his, his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. So prior to the transfiguration, Jesus had been making clear his true identity to his disciples. He'd also gone on to explain that he would be killed but after three days rise again. And this had made Peter extremely unhappy because he wanted a Messiah who would remove the Romans and reclaim Israel's sovereignty. But instead, he was rebuked by Jesus with the words, get behind me, Satan. Thus, the transfiguration can be seen as Jesus together with his father confirming who he is even if only three of the disciples, Peter, James, and John, were allowed to witness it. Moreover, they were ordered to tell no one about what had happened until after Jesus had risen from the dead. The Old Testament reading uh, is a similarly dramatic piece, uh, as the prophet Elijah is taken up to heaven in a chariot of fire and horses, immediately after he and his faithful disciple Elisha had escaped from a band of 50 men by parting the waters of the Jordan. Thank you very much, Kathy, for reading it so beautifully to us. Uh, Elijah, of course, appears in the Transfiguration story uh, and in both Matthew's and Mark's Gospels. The verses after the Transfiguration are about Elijah and whether he needs to reappear before the Messiah can come. So there are plenty of links between today's two readings. Now, as some of you will know, Elijah lived in the time after King Solomon's long reign, uh, when his kingdom had been split into two, Israel to the north and Judah, including Jerusalem to the south. Each part had its own king, um, before Israel, but not Judah, uh, was captured by the Assyrians. It was a turbulent time with the kings rarely matching King David's obedience to God's expectations. And Elijah is probably most famous for defeating the prophets of Baal 
to whom King Ahab and his wife Jezebel had been worshipping uh, to bring the people back to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel. Elisha's request to Elijah that he inherit a double share of his spirit, which he is granted as long as he sees Elijah as he's taken away, is very much honoured. Elisha goes on to perform many miracles and plays a large part in the eventual defeat of Ahab and Jezebel. And he dominates the first 13 chapters of the second book of Kings in comparison with Elijah's nine chapters at the end of the first book of Kings and into the second book. But Elijah is revered as the greater prophet mentioned in the same breath as Moses as in the story of the transfiguration. But today is Valentine's Day, and I believe we must find some connection. Valentine's Day is a proper saint's day and has a long pedigree. Uh, it was established by, by Pope Galatius I in AD 496 to be celebrated on February the 14th in honor of St. Valentine of Rome, who died on that date in AD 269. He was a bishop martyred for helping persecuted Christians. However, there may have been other persons called Valentine who were also martyred. And the day has been associated with romantic love since the 14th and 15th centuries, possibly because of the connection with lovebirds in springtime. So what are the connections with love in our two Bible readings today? The suggestions in the commentaries about them that is out there on the web, etc. I mean, focus principally on the wow factor that both stories have, um, which is present in love. And I'm immediately reminded of the opening line of a hymn uh, that Claire and I were introduced to when we spent Easter on Iona nearly two years ago. It was at the evening service on the Wednesday before Easter and it was based around the story of Mary, the sister of Lazarus and Martha, anointing Jesus's feet with very expensive perfumes. One of the disciples complained that the perfume should have been sold and the money given to the poor. But Jesus rebuked him saying, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Uh, that's from John's Gospel, chapter 12. At the service, this was interpreted for us as an encouragement to love generously or even more, which I'll return to in a moment. The hymn we sang that day, and we've sung at Trinity a few times, begins with the word, words, love is the touch of intangible joy. Those words make me go, wow. Let me just read you the, the, the first verse of the whole hymn. Love is the touch of intangible joy. Love is the force that no fear can destroy. Love is the goodness we gladly applaud. God is where love is for love is of God. In the transfiguration, God shows his love to Jesus as he speaks from the cloud, and Jesus shows his love towards Peter, James, and John by sharing the experience with them. Similarly, Elijah and Elisha show their love and devotion to one another. Elisha by his steadfastness in not leaving his inspiration. Elijah in asking what he could do for Elisha before his passing. At the end of that service on Iona, after singing, Love is the Touch of Intangible Joy, on leaving the Abbey, our hands were anointed with oil as we received the exhortation, know that you are loved, so go and love wastefully, just as Lazarus's sister Mary had. 
So on this Valentine's Day, know that you are loved by God. So go and love wastefully. Alyssa will now lead us in our prayers of intercession. As we continue in these times of uncertainty, we focus our attention to those who are struggling for many reasons and are in need of our thoughts and prayers. Let us pray. Dear Lord, in these trying times, we look to you for strength and guidance to get us through each day. And we lift up these prayers to you. We pray for all who are struggling during this difficult time. We pray for all who have had to adjust to new ways of living, living in isolation, remote working, and educating from home. We pray for the struggling parents who are finding it difficult to achieve all the tasks they have been handed as workers, teachers, carers of both children and parents. Be with us all, especially when the day today becomes just too much. We pray for all who find it difficult to share and explain their feelings and ask others for help. Provide them with the strength and courage to share their true feelings and ask for assistance when needed. Even on days when no words will come and we can only muster a good cry, we know that tears are prayed to and travel to you when there are no words. We can find comfort in knowing that you hear prayers in all forms. We also pray for the children who are finding it difficult to adjust to a new life without peer interaction and spending increased time with their parents. We pray for little ones who have been born during the pandemic who will need to learn how to socialize and trust others once it is safe to enter the outside world. We continue to pray for the NHS staff and all who are administering the vaccines. We pray for their safety and energy when dealing with their patients. We pray for the countries without national health care systems that they find ways to administer the vaccines adequately, fairly, and in a timely manner with no political intervention. Lord, as we are now in the midst of our third lockdown, these times have been difficult and trying for even the most positive and optimistic of your people. We pray for those you have sent to us as beacons of light and hope during these difficult times. We now pray for one of those wonderful spirits, Captain Tom Moore. We pray for his family and for the entire nation experiencing the loss of his life that encourage us all through his kindness compassion, determination, and optimistic spirit. We ask that you continue to send us these positive spirits during these unprecedented times. We pray that we ourselves may become positive spirits to others. We ask that you give us the courage and compassion to reach out to those who are struggling, those in need, and to our family and friends that we long to see, to let them know they are loved and not forgotten. We pray for all who are grieving the personal loss of a loved one, as it has not been possible to properly gather to grieve and celebrate the lives of our cherished family and friends. May we remember with joy those whose journey now has ended and whose lives among us helped us on our own journeys. 
And now in a moment of silence, let us bring before you our personal prayers for those who are on our hearts and minds. And finally, we pray for ourselves and our Trinity Wimbledon family. Give us the strength to carry on during these difficult times, knowing that brighter days are to come. Help us to transmit your love to all that are in need and also within our relationships. We ask you to motivate us all to take positive actions to help others. Dear Lord, during these confusing, trying, and unprecedented times, help us to quiet the chaos in our lives and in our minds so that we can take the time to hear your voice, accept, and put into practice what you have taught us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for that lovely prayer, Alyssa. This is an opportunity now to set aside our regular financial contributions to Trinity's ongoing work and witness. Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of all that is good, we give you thanks for the gifts of life and love, family and friendship, and for the joy of the coming of your son, our savior, Jesus Christ. All things have their origin with you, Lord, and we bring before you now just a portion of those gifts that you have given us to share and pray that you would take and use them for your glory and us in the service of your kingdom. Amen. And now let us sing our final hymn of praise, the song, Lord, the light of your love, shine, Jesus, shine.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, raise our expectations of what it means to encounter God in every place we shall be in the days ahead. Help us every day to discover something new about God's ways, about what God wants of us, and change the way we see the world and the way we act. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore.